Hi, it's Melissa from PolkaDotChair.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a set of soft and fuzzy baby blankets. These blankets are so easy to make. They make great gifts. You can definitely make them in the afternoon. All you need to make them is a little over a yard of minky fabric and a little over a yard of flannel fabric. If you've not worked with Miki before, don't worry. It's not as intimidating as you think it is. And it is a great material for gifts for babies. The blankets that we're gonna make, you have two choices of how you want to finish the edge of the blankets. You can finish the edge of the blanket with a simple bias edge, like I did for the pink blanket here or you can finish the edge of the blanket with a little bit of jumbo rickrack trim. And you can see how that is here. I like to finish my baby blankets with a little bit of trim because I think honestly it helps in the construction process. If you've ever made a baby blanket where you just sew two pieces of fabric together and then turn them right side out and top stitch it, you'll notice that sometimes it can be kind of hard to get a clean edge along the outside seam. So by adding a little bit of bias trim or decorative trim like the Rick Rack, it gives you something that you can kind of tug on during the construction process so you get a nice crisp edge, which I think really gives this blanket a professional finish. These blankets, like I said, are very easy to make. They are definitely beginner friendly if you haven't sewn a lot. If you have sewn a lot, I think that you will enjoy this quick fix project. Okay, let's jump in with what you need to make these blankets. The first thing you're gonna need is two pieces of fabric, one piece of flannel and one piece of minky cut to 40 by 40. Go ahead and make sure that your flannel is nice and square cut to 40 by 40 because it's a little easier to cut than the minky. Most flannel comes 44 inches wide, but it has a pretty big selvage on it. Um, so that's why it's if you want a square blanket, I just plan on 40 by 40. But if your flannel doesn't have a large salvage and you want it 42 by 42, you can totally do that just as long as all your pieces are the same size. First thing you're going to do is round the corners of your flannel. We're just going to work with the flannel for now. It's easier to manipulate. Um, it'll be easier to trim the minky to size later, and I'll show you how I do that. What I'm using for this is a Creative Grids curved corner ruler. If you don't have one of these, you can also use a plate or a cup or anything with like a round edge. And I have my flannel folded in half here. And I'm just going to lay this here and I'm using the three inch radius corner with my cutting, my rotary cutter. And just go ahead and trim that off. And then go ahead and do the same thing to the other two corners of the flannel. So what I want to do is show you how to cut your flannel on the bias. Um, all quilt rulers have markings on them. Uh, this one has a marking right here that you can see right at 45 degrees. Um, there's also other angles and degrees, but that's the one you need to worry about right now. What I'm going to do is with my fabric on the fold is I am going to mark this right here at 45 degrees. I'm going to start cutting and then move my ruler as I cut. So this is at 45 on the bottom of the ruler here and I'm just going to cut and then can kind of slide the ruler. Keep cutting. So now you've got your 45 marked. You know this is a 45 degree angle from the grain, the selvage grain of the fabric. And what we're going to do is cut two inch strips and you just cut them however is comfortable for you with your ruler measurement. Um, for me, I'll just take my ruler here and come over two inches. Now, You'll notice that when I do this, I get a little V, which is not what I want. Um, so you're gonna have to go ahead and cut that in part. And I end up with a piece of bias that is, just double check, make sure it's the measurement I think it is. This is 22 inches. 
you um, need to cut enough of these strips to make about 125 inches of continuous bias. I'll show you how to sew it together. Um, but it's not completely straightforward because every time you cut this, your strips are going to get a little bit shorter. And I like to use every little bit of my fabric when I cut on the bias. If you wanted longer bias strips, you could start with a yard of fabric and you'd get a longer piece. But for this project, I don't think you're going to notice the seams since they're tucked into the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting all of my bias strips and sew them together. Now I have all of my bias strips cut. I'm ready to sew them together. Um, I just like to keep them in a pile by my sewing machine and sew them one at a time. I don't usually pin them. But what you do is you just place the two pieces like this. You might want to double check and make sure your cats are still all going the same direction, which mine aren't, so I'm going to go the other direction with that. Place the two bias strips next to each other and then you're going to come in and you are going to sew a 45 degree angle. If you want to, you can go ahead and mark this. Um, it's up to you. Uh, if I were to mark this, I would go ahead and use my ruler again. So that I know that's 45 degrees, so then after it's sewn, it, it keeps your nice angle there. So then go ahead and sew those, and sew all your strips together, and then press them and trim the excess fabric off. All right, I have all of my bias stitched together and I've trimmed the seams down and then all I've done is fold it in half, wrong sides together, and I have one long continuous strip. As far as how many strips to cut, I cut almost all of my half yard into strips with the exception of the like the two corners that were kind of getting small and that was plenty. You can cut less if you want, but I always kind of figure you're not gonna use that half yard of fabric for anything else anyway, so you might as well just have a little bit of extra in case you want it if you mess up. What you wanna do is take this strip and you're gonna pin it to the top of your flannel piece, right sides facing. The reason that we had to do this on a bias is because this isn't perfect, but I'll kind of show you. You need this strip to go around a curve, and you also need this strip to stretch when it's turned the correct way. So that's why we needed to cut this on the bias. Pin this all the way around and stitch it in place with a half inch seam allowance. All right, we've gotten back to where we started. Um, I have a little flange of this left and a little flange of this left, and I have cut this piece. Then you're going to flatten this out, and I usually pin it, open this up and flatten it out. And place a pin. And if this is the first time that you've done this, um, I would definitely go ahead and mark the 45 degree angle and make sure you've got lots of pins and that your fabric is out of the way. And go ahead and stitch just from here to here on an angle. Before you do this part, go ahead and make sure that um, it is going to look correct when you're done before you cut anything off. Um, sometimes it's easy to twist it too many times before you put it down, but just make sure that that will lay flat. Then go ahead and trim off the extra seam allowance and finish sewing this all the way around the edge. The next part I am going to show you on this tabletop, but I highly recommend that you do this on a floor. Um, a carpeted floor is good because it kind of helps hold the fabric in place or a big table because you need this piece to be flat and lay it completely flat out before you start sewing it. So you've got your piece of minky here that's pretty close to 40 by 40 and you are going to lay it completely flat right side up just like that. Now you're going to take your flannel piece and lay it on top of your minky piece 
right sides facing. Just like this. Now I know that my minky piece is a little wider than I need um, because I left the salvages on because I prefer just to only cut this thing one time. I don't want to cut it multiple times because it's, like I said, it's kind of slippery and can kind of get away from you a little bit. So I'm going to, since I know I've got plenty of width, I'm gonna go ahead and start pinning right here. So you're gonna pin this very well. And before you start pinning, you're gonna lay this on the floor and make sure there's no wrinkles, everything's completely flat, um, everything lines up. This is why I like the Minky a little bit bigger because it doesn't have necessarily it has a grain, but not as much of a grain as the flannel does. So if it gets off by a little bit, you're not gonna notice in the finished blanket, but you definitely would notice with the flannel. And as long as you've got some extra fabric to work with, then you're totally fine. So what you wanna do now, after you've got it on, you're on the floor, you've got all your pins in it, everything's flat, is you're gonna take it to your machine. You're gonna sew it along the stitching line that you created to sew that extra, little um, one inch flange piece on. And as long as you stick on that stitching line that you already stitched, then you know when you turn it right side out exactly how much of that little flange is gonna be showing. And stitch it all the way around and leave an opening, oh, I would say eight to 10 inches wide to turn the blanket right side out. All right, I've sewn all the way around the exterior of the blanket. I have an opening on one side so I can turn it right side out. At this point, what you're gonna wanna do is trim away the extra minky seam allowance. It's up to you what you cut it with, whatever you're most comfortable with. I personally prefer to use a rotary cutter, but you can also use a sharp pair of scissors. And then, just go ahead and trim that down so it's the same as the flannel layer and then we're going to turn it right side out. Before you move on to the next step, take a moment and make sure you didn't miss any fabric and that there aren't any puckers in your fabric, especially since you couldn't see this. Um, so this is an example of a pucker right here. Let me get that to focus. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is come in and unpick this little piece and then um, sew it again so that it's gone. I'm gonna go ahead and do that after, but I'm gonna show you guys how to turn it right side out in the meantime. So we're gonna take this through the opening and it's just pretty straightforward. Turn it right side out. This is why I like to use this little flange because I've noticed before when I've made um, minky baby blankets, I feel like I never can get a nice crisp edge, um, mostly because there's not, not really anything to hold on to. But I like using rickrack or an extra piece of fabric because it gives you something as you're turning it right side out to grab onto. And then you can kind of tug on it and get a nice crisp edge on your seam. So go ahead and pull, uh, turn all of that right side out, pull it to the front, um, and then we're gonna go ahead and close up the seam. Let's go ahead and close the seam up. We've got a big opening right here. I am going to close this up by top stitching around the edge by machine. You can also hand stitch this closed. It's up to you. The top stitching at this point is decorative. Um, and this would absolutely stay together with hand stitching. It's just really personal preference of what you like. But just take this extra little piece of minky fabric here and turn it under. Fold it and turn it under all the way along the opening and pin it. Then go to your machine and just stitch all the way around all four sides very close to that seam. And I like to stitch on the blanket, not on the edge trim fabric. 
Let me show you the differences in construction to make this uh, baby blanket with Rick Rack instead of the fabric flange. Um, all you're going to need is some extra wide jumbo Rick Rack. This Rick Rack is one inch Rick Rack, meaning it's an inch from the two top peaks. And then all you do is really simple. You're just going to sew it straight down the center of the Rick Rack to the right side of the blanket fabric. Um, you're going to want to, where the ends meet, just cut them and then hit it with a little bit of fray check just to keep it from fraying. And the remainder of the construction process is exactly the same. You're going to layer it right sides together with the minky and stitch along your existing stitching line. Turn it right side out and top stitch it. Here you can see the finished blanket with the Rick Rack. I have um, sewn it, top stitched it, and closed the opening. And by comparison, here is the one made with the bias cut fabric flange. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to check out our blog, polka.chair.com. We've got thousands of free tutorials, sewing patterns, craft ideas, all kinds of fun stuff, and we'd love to see you there.